Hello everyone. Welcome. Welcome to this special lecture. Now, today we are done with our SBIPO prelims exam. Uh, today was the last day, last shift. So, after today, the most important thing that comes into your mind is obviously how do we move ahead, go ahead uh, in, in the preparation for the mains examination. And that is why this particular session made a lot of sense today and that's why we are here with you today to guide you in the ways of preparation for mains. And most importantly, today's agenda of this session is to show to you the mistakes that normally people commit while preparing for mains and uh, and, and we will, you know, we will, we will learn them, we will know about them through association with the recently conducted FIFA World Cup and we will uh, take into reference uh, the World Cup semi-finalists, the four teams that qualified in semi-finals and uh, take all lessons from them. What do we learn from them and how do we use these lessons to improve our mains preparation to ensure that we are doing the right things in mains preparation we will look into that obviously uh, you know I, I i took up uh, fifa world cup uh, as reference for today's session because it's just day before yesterday the finals got over and uh, you know it's one of the largest sporting event of the world millions of people follow it I'm sure a lot of you follow it too. But for those who are unversed and haven't been following it, I'm sure you'd be knowing the, uh, you know, the semi-finalists and the finalists, the winner, because that's part of your GA, right? Okay. So, but I'll, I'll give you a little brief of it. See, four teams qualified in the semi-final. Uh, Argentina played uh, against Croatia in semi-final and France played against Morocco in semi-final. France won, Argentina won and they played finals and uh, Argentina won that match in a nail biting match, right? So this is, the, this is the premise of it. This is for those who are unversed, who do not follow football and uh, did not have an idea about it. Because the rest of the things that I would tell you, uh, you, would, you would relate to them because, you know, uh, football just like other sports uh, is, is nothing but the reflection of the life uh, that we lead, the problems that we face in life, the solutions that we try and find out in life. So, in from any sports, the learning that we get can enrich our life's experience and just like that, football is also going to do that for us, especially for us in the short term in our mains preparation and you'd see that, you'd see that, you'd enjoy that and if you follow that, I am sure that you would do amazingly well in your upcoming mains exams of SBIPO. Okay, right? So, let's start off with the first lesson. Uh, so, I have punched in the mistakes and the lessons together so that, you know, you come to know about the mistakes in the lesson only. So, lesson number one, don't let others, uh, you know, judge you or uh, write you off or tell you how much you can achieve. So, what I would suggest you to do for the next to five weeks or so to the SBIPO mains exam is stop listening to everyone. So, uh, with, with everyone, I mean that those people who do not matter, who do not have the uh, ability to, you know, advise, don't listen to them. Because there, there are a lot of stuff that you can relate uh, to it. First of all, if you, if you look at this year's lineup of semi-finalists, do you think that, uh, you know, anyone could have predicted that Morocco would reach the semi-finals? Very, very, very few uh, people could, could have done it. And that too, after uh, defeating all the heavyweights, Belgium, Spain, Portugal. So, one debacle after another uh, Morocco ended up doing in this World Cup by defeating all these stalwarts. So, you know, if, if at the start of the tournament, uh, did anyone expect Morocco to do anything like this? No. So, everyone wrote off Morocco, but Morocco did not write itself off. It stopped listening to others and that's the result that they are today one of the top teams of the world because they reached the semi-finals of world's largest sporting event. So, 
what does that mean for us it means for us that we need to stop listening to uh, stupid videos whether it is cut off videos whether how many people would clear the cut off whether you know uh, you you uh, you should look for other exams or not these kind of videos are sheer waste of time and i have told you again and again why they are so right uh, if 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 you look at my previous uh, videos when which i delivered to you or abhishek sir's videos which i deliver we deliver to you uh, in ibpspo mains uh, time there also we told you how uh, predicting the prelims cut off without the paper for multiple slots is a fruitless exercise but still people do it for views and you watch it for giving them views right do you get some anything from it no right but still you go and watch it so stop doing that exercise that's a sheer waste of your time right the second thing is that there is no reason you for you to think that you are small because morocco proved it that no team is too small and no team is too big too it defeated portugal it defeated spain belgium right one of uh, you know some of the favorites to win this tournament so be confident in your abilities in your persistence in your dedication right and finally and most importantly in this lesson the you know the manifestation of this lesson for you is don't wait for results assume you are qualifying for the mains and start preparation your preparation is not going to get waste even if you do not clear the prelims M mark my words i'm not saying that you're not going to clear the prelims i'm 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 telling you to assume that you're going to clear prelims right whatever the cut offs because you know that whatever you think about the cut off might not be the case because there will be normalization there will be so many things different different slots are there so how your slot scores would come you do not know so if you do not prepare thinking that you would not clear and uh, you end up clearing it you will so so curse yourself that you know you will repent a lot so why to repent when we have the opportunity to take the benefit out of this situation right okay so that was lesson number 1 don't let others write you off stop listening to others and start preparing for mains from today right the second lesson see whenever you are uh, facing a failure you have two choices one you learn from it and become confident and second you get all tensed up you build a pressure inside you you have been thinking so much about this paper and you did not clear that paper right i'll i'll give you the context first let me give you the analogy to the sports Uh, of 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 FIFA World Cup 2022, what happened here? Argentina, the first match, they lost to a team which you know for all practical purpose was novice uh, in front of Argentina. The first match of the tournament, Argentina lost. Then it struggled in in many matches after that. You know, even in the quarterfinals with uh, Netherlands. Uh, they they were in they were going to win and then uh, netherlands put in equalizers then it, at one point it seemed uh, that they are going to lose and then they again came back and and won the game so what argentina's campaign this year signifies for all of us is that there is always hope right you know uh, after the first loss of argentina in the uh, in the tournament uh, why did they lose the 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 common uh, agreement was that argentina was too tensed argentina was too built up uh, you know pressure had built up in their minds that this year we have to win this year we have to win this is messi's last uh, year right so th that was happening and that ended up doing just the opposite of what they wanted the same thing happens with you when you expect too much from yourself and you stop enjoying your paper enjoying your mocks enjoying your preparation you end up scoring much lower than your potential so argentina was not enjoying their game rather they were all expectation build up 
right so they lost to uh, a, a, a very uh, a, you know a considerably weaker team than uh, them so what does that mean for us don't lose hope due to other results now why why did i uh, say all of these because this is the time of results the clerk exams have happened so their results would come out the IBPS PO results would come out. So all, all sorts of results would come out from here till SBIPO mains. So some would be, uh, somewhere you would be pleasantly surprised, somewhere you might get a jhatka, right? Uh, it might stun you, you might have expected a better result from that particular exam and you did not get it. So any one of these results, should it affect your preparation for mains? No. That's what we learn from Argentina. Okay, so don't lose hope because your results of previous exams have not been up to your expectation. Right? So learn from them and become more confident. Don't get tensed. Now you would tell me, sir, there is so much depending upon me. My family is depending upon me. So my dear friends, the whole nation dependent uh, depended upon uh, Argentina, uh, Argentinian team. Right. Okay. Why the whole nation? I mean, you know, uh, <clears throat> more than 50% of football lovers of the world dependent upon uh, Lionel Messi and his team. So there was so much pressure on them, right? Okay. So what, how did they react? The first day they reacted on pressure, they lost. From the next day, they reacted with confidence and they started winning games. That's what we also need to do. Okay. And this does not include only bad results from the exams that you have already taken. This also uh, includes results of mocks. Now from today, you would be taking, you know, uh, uh, to run up to the mains uh, exam of SBIPO, you would be taking so many mocks, maybe 10, 12 mocks. In those mocks, if you do not perform according to your expectations, should you be tensed or should you learn from them, analyze them, learn from them and become more confident? I think it should be the latter, right? How to analyze the mock, what you should do in these next five to six weeks for the mains preparation. The whole strategy I have already discussed in one of my previous uh, lectures uh, for IBPSPO mains. Just after the IBPSPO prelims exam, we discussed what we should be doing for IBPSPO mains. The same advice remains as good as uh, you know, uh, for, for you today, uh, for SBIPO mains, right? So I'll link that, uh, I'll, I'll give the link to that, uh, you know, lecture in the description. You can go ahead and watch that particular lecture. You would know the whole strategy, how you should plan your next five to six weeks, right? In today's lecture, as I told you, we'll talk about the mistakes that we commit in this period as well as in the exam and the mocks so that we avoid those mistakes and get the best out of those strategy that I make for myself in the course of my preparation for mains, right? So that was lesson number two. Now lesson number three, focus on your overall game and not one aspect of it or even not two, three aspects of it. Focus on your overall game. This works on for your micro as well as macro. So you should not be focusing on only one aspect of quant or one aspect of English, but you should be focusing on almost all aspects of quant and English. Obviously, there will be some strengths, there will be some weaknesses, and we'll talk about that them in lesson four and lesson five, right? But, uh, you know, you should be knowing about all of them and be practiced enough in all of them, right? Because when you over focus on a particular issue, then you end up losing chances of capitalizing on other areas. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you the analogy, the analogy of uh, the uh, World Cup, uh, you know, finals and semi-finals in here were the two teams, Morocco and Croatia. Morocco, if you have watched their last two matches, the semi-final against France, as well as the uh, match for the, uh, you know, uh, second runner-up that is the third place uh, against Croatia. In both of these matches, Morocco was focusing only on their defense. They were, they were more focused on their defense. Morocco had one of the best defenses and arguably the best defense this year amongst all the teams that participated, right? But still, that was one aspect of the game. 
there was ball position there was ball uh, you know uh, uh, shots on the target there was a strike there was winger movement all of those aspects of the game remained largely largely ignored by morocco in these last two games they had excellent defense but what happened was that their defense when once their defense was broken once or twice because they did not focus on the other areas they could not put up those equalizers right and they ended up losing the uh, games okay then in the game of uh, croatia and argentina the semi final the one they lost 60% of the ball position was uh, with croatia 40% with argentina but the scorecard was something else argentina 3 croatia 0 so what had happened see the croatia in the argentina's game focused on only one aspect more mostly on one aspect and that was ball possession but that is not all that is just one part of it right ball possession if it is not translated to shots on target if it is not translated to goals then you do not win the match right so this is what we mean for you also and how does it translate for you simple general awareness descriptive are new in main so obviously you need to focus on them how do you plan your preparation in that i have discussed in my ibpspo mains strategy lecture go through that right obviously you need to focus on that on every day basis but that does not mean that we can ignore our quant english and reasoning di english and reasoning and vice versa also we cannot ignore the ga and descriptive also so you have to balance them out the preparation has to be balanced them out how much time need to be given to each one of them so that you can prepare on the basis of the position you are in from the conceptual uh, background that we have discussed in that lecture uh, that i had already told you just go there and uh, listen to it you would know what to do now what you need to do is to do you know you need to act on it right you need to assure ensure that you would be concentrating on all aspect of the game obviously there will be some strengths in some areas you will have some weaknesses that is understandable but you would focus on all areas okay so in the areas of your strength you will perform better in the areas of your weakness you will perform not to up to the mark but the overall performance would be enough to win the match that what matters right okay so the next thing is the lesson number 4 and that is a debate that ranges on the uh, uh, youtube on the social media that sir i am a newcomer in this particular exam i am taking the exam for the first time uh someone would say that i am taking the exam for the 10th time 5th time whatever uh, it is you know uh, taking such kind of exam for the nth time uh i you know whether i have more advantage or he has more advantage right this this debate goes on literally it does not matter right whether you are taking the exam for the 5th time 6th time or the exam for the first time it really does not matter because every match is different right and you know uh, whatever you are a new uh, newcomer or a veteran you know a beginner you have to play on your strength keeping in mind the context right and i'll give you the analogy to it see in day before yesterday's match mbappe and messi both were the stars of the game right apart from obviously the two goalkeepers who were also very very amazing so mbappe focused on speed right okay and uh, rightly so because he is young he has more speed stamina so obviously he is focused on his strength and build up uh, the scores on on that messi on the other hand has speed right he is is not it's not that he does not have any speed not if not like mbappe but he has uh, considerable speed in his game but still he did not focus on it because he was all, you know almost marked by 3 4 defenders all the time so he concentrated on his other strengths that is gaps and assists he assisted more goals he, he you know messi got the uh, player of the tournament or uh, you know golden ball award 
because he assisted so many uh, goals for so many goals as well as uh, you know he himself also scored a lot but he assisted also so both of them played on their strengths on that day in the final right mbappe relatively newcomer at 22 23 messi a veteran at 35 so if mbappe had focused on messi skills and messi had focused on mbappe skills do you think they would have uh, you know uh, performed as well as they had performed day before yesterday no not at all right okay so that's what you need to understand now what it means for you you should also play to your strengths but don't get emotionally involved you know uh, a lot of you might not know but messi was at one time known for his speed no one no one could match uh, with him uh, on his speed and that was 7 8 years back but he has reconciled to that fact that his age has uh, he is at an enhanced age with terms you know in terms of the uh, football playing age and therefore he'll have to build on his other skills more than his speed because he might not be able to beat on the skills so he's not emotionally involved to uh, that he has his skills so if necessary he would use those speed skills where it would be possible right but when you are marked by four people speed might not be something that would see you through so this means what for you this means that you should not miss easy questions even from areas which you would feel are not your strength areas and also you should not be focusing only on doing those uh, questions uh, that are from your areas of strength even if they are super difficult right so don't get emotionally involved with your perceptions because your strengths your weaknesses are perceptions based on the difficulty level that you have encountered if the difficulty level of those particular kind of questions are increased then you would see that the strength that you had in that particular kind of question because the difficulty level has increased has come down a little or maybe much right in that moment scoring is more important so therefore you should not never never miss easy questions even if they are from non strengths and you should never focus only on difficult questions even if they are from your strengths okay right so that was lesson number 4 and it doesn't matter whether you are veteran whether you are a newcomer it doesn't matter if you focus on the rules of the game and uh, do the right things you would win that day the last lesson lesson number 5 remember this persistence beats luck most of the times one of the mistakes that you know uh, students do in uh, preparation for mains is that they start thinking that they do not have that luck right uh, they take mocks and every mock they create uh, do new mistakes right and they end up getting demotivated fr uh, from that so there they leave in between in the preparation only they leave in between thinking that mains is too tough for them and they end up not taking mains in the best of their spirits right this happened in ibps po mains also some students looking at the difficulty level of the mocks imagine that they are not able to do even 5 7 7 8 uh, questions in mocks in di section therefore they have stand no chance they did not look at the uh, percentile score they did not look that they were getting 85 90 percentile in their percentile scores so that was a misjudgment they went to the paper with a mindset that they would not be able to clear it what happened they took the mock i uh, sorry they took the paper and uh, they ended up not doing the quant and the reasoning section uh, to the extent they they could have done and when they come out of the paper they realize that the quant or the di section was uh, so difficult uh, in iupsp o means that uh people are saying that even 3 4 5 attempts would have done the job which they could have done but because they had um, assumed that they would not be able to clear this time they ended up you know uh, the right phrase would be they ended up digging their own grave right apna kabar khud khod diya 
right so don't do that keep persistently at it till the end of exam remember the game is not over until it is over and what is the the best example the best example is the finals the there were so many seesaw mo mo moment in the final first half belong to argentina second half last 15 minutes belong to france Th the 30 minutes extra time belong to both balanced out right so many times the game went from one person uh, one uh, one team to another right in the extra time also uh, uh, argentina scored and in the last 5 minutes france again scored acha luck favored france uh, many a times so like for example the uh, hand that uh, you know the penalty uh, the second penalty that uh, they got in the extra time right was uh, was a lucky break for them okay so if you if you look at it if you look at uh, day before yesterday's game and even analysts would tell you that luck was on the side of france for uh, quite a long time in that game but tables turned tables turned in the penalty shootout how the tables turned with the first save of the goalkeeper the argentinian goalkeeper saved the second penalty kick uh, in the shootout and the whole thing changed right the script changed till then the script was very balanced a little fa favoring france right now the game script changed tilting the balance towards argentina and then in the next penalty Fran the uh, player from france hit the goal post and missed it and the whole uh, 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 balance got tilted towards argentina so what what does that mean argentina if you look at it they made a lot of mistakes day before yesterday no doubt about it in the finals but they persistently kept at it and even if they faltered in sometimes the end result was favorable for them so persistence is key it can beat your luck also so even if you have bad luck on the day of the exam if you keep persistently at it during the preparation phase as well as on the day of the exam till the end of the exam then tables might as well turn right most cases it will turn so individual and here what are the what are the impediments impediments would be individual mocks they may turn out to be super bad you know uh, on the day of the exam some particular section set may stun you may leave you non plussed that that oh i i am just missing it i have done this but i am not getting anything out of it some may pleasantly surprise you also but some may stun you and when they stun you don't wait there move on with the game keep persistently at every question every section so that at the end of the game the result is favorable for you okay right so even if you falter in some questions na like argentina faltered in uh, some places in defense they faltered a lot of times right so even if you falter in some questions in some section the overall results may be still be favorable for you okay and remember this this is this is the you know uh, what do i say this is the crux of ev uh, all games is that until the last uh, second is over the game is on right no matter no matter inside the game whatever you feel you have done good or bad should not let you affect the subsequent questions and sections and that goes for preparation also if one day of my preparation till mains is bad that should not affect you your next day of preparation negatively positively it can affect but negatively no right okay so those were the five most important lessons that we learn from this year's fifa world cup and uh, mostly from the semi finalists the four semi finalists so if you if you learn from this game and get going uh, you would see that your game is also improving day on day in the preparation phase as well as inside the paper okay right and that's what you need to do these are uh, the five lessons that i would have any way shared with you in you know uh, maybe not so interesting format but uh, because they are in an interesting format don't uh, think that they are not important they are very important 
these are the mistakes that people commit during the preparation phase inside the paper inside the mocks and then they end up marring their chances i have seen exceptional students not cracking because they have committed one of these mistakes or more than one of these mistakes so if you are able to avoid that you would ensure that you are giving your best and obviously for that you have to have a plan you'll have to have a strategy of how to prepare ga how to prepare quant how to prepare uh, english right and all all the other things how to plan your mocks how to analyze your mocks all of those things need to be there and for that i told you the link to the relevant lectures would be in the description just go through them and watch it right and you would get an idea okay now there is one message for the message for the 2023 uh, students aspirants a lot of students have been asking for uh, you know how to prepare for 2023 even for our batches right uh, there is a message for all of you who are looking uh, forward to 2023 seriously sincerely is that on 22nd of uh, this month that is uh, on thursday right 22nd of this month thursday uh, you uh, would be um, getting the opportunity to interact with abhishek sir live and clear all your doubts regarding 2023 preparation exams and strategy okay right so if you if you if you are a serious aspirant don't miss that opportunity Uh, the uh, live event uh, is is uh, already uh, there right you can like that event get the notification on on for that event so that you are notified for the right time evening 22nd we uh, can meet and they discuss about how to plan your preparation for 2023 right okay so that will be all for today all the best to all of those students who are preparing this year and even the next year right because these things uh, remain relevant for all times right so thanks a lot and all the best